Saint Etienne are 10 time champions of League Up. Only PSG have won more than them. However, the club suffered a relegation to the second division in 2022 and failed to get back promoted last season. So, thanks to you lot, we're going to rebuild Saint Etienne. Our major aim is to get back to the top of French football but we're going to have seasonal objectives every single year to guide us on our way. Before we get into those objectives though, we should probably get ourselves acquainted with the club. Let's start off by meeting some of the players. And this is our squad for the upcoming season at the start of the game. You'll notice there are a ton of centre mids, not too many defenders and not too many attackers either. So we're going to have to take that into account when building a formation. If we sort it by current ability, the very best player in the club is Gautier, a 26-year-old goalkeeper with decent league on current ability. St Etienne signed him in real life for 1.4 million from Brest, which is a huge amount of money to pay at this level. And it's going to make it even more frustrating when I controversially say in the first episode of a new series on a brand new channel that I am not planning on using Gautier this season. This is Etienne Green, who in previous foot managers has been a wonder kid. I, I don't think his potentiality is quite as good as it has been in previous versions of the game, but he still has four and a half stars of potential to be a leading league on goalkeeper. Comparing the two of them, you can see that Gautier is better in a lot of areas, but I'm thinking if we can get Etienne Green playing all of this season, by the end of the year, they might be on a level playing field and then we can use Etienne to really develop properly and hopefully maybe even use him for the entire series. Also, he has the perfect name for this club. We're playing at St Etienne and we play in green. We do have a third goalkeeper. He's 34 years old. I will sell him ASAP. The second best player in the team is Florian Tardeo. He's a 31-year-old CDM and it's only him and Gautier that have decent league un current ability according to our coaches. Everyone else is either a leading league dub player or a little bit below that. Essentially, if we got promoted right now, we would really, really struggle in the top division. So we have to try and improve some players this season and obviously recruit smartly. But Florian only moved to the club in real life this season from league rivals Troyes, so hopefully he can score some goals past them. Big fan of his work rate and teamwork and stamina, he'll be quite useful to have. The best striker in the team is Guy Tan here, and I want to replace him pretty quickly because he's 34 years old now. He is going to start declining quite quickly, and his physical attributes are going to rapidly drop off. We do also have 27-year-old Ibrahim Sissoko that we could use. There's not an awful lot in it right now, so I suspect we probably will rotate these guys around, but Gaitan is earning more money and on paper is slightly better, especially mentally. There's also going to be some controversy around our starting right centre-back. We could go for Dylan Batu Binsika. He is fantastic. I love everything about this man apart from his uh, lack of pace. 11 acceleration at 12 pace, not so good. He is in direct competition with our club captain, Anthony Briancon. Uh, he's also rubbish in terms of pace, but Batu Binsika has got slightly better heading and jumping reach. They're very, very similar but I think I go for Batty Benzica for his aerial ability. Now, you might be thinking, Tom, why on earth are you not playing both of them in the same team? And that's because of the tactics that I want to play. I want to try and go for a very possession-based tactic this season, and so I've gone to RDS videos and looked at some of his stuff and taken one of his, essentially. But that involves having a libero in the back line, and neither of those two players can play libero. Instead, I'm taking a risk, and I'm playing our centre midfielder, Thomas Moncondui, which is a mouthful to say. Try and say it out loud, it's difficult. But I think he actually suits the libero role really nicely. Look, libero on support here. He dribbles well, he's got a good first touch. Heading a little bit poor, but we can overlook that a little bit. Markings, decent passings, decent tacklings, decent technique. Everything's decent about him. And he has a fairly strong left foot as well to play on the left-hand side of the defence. I think we take a gamble and play this natural centre mid at centre back. And so on paper, we're playing a 4-3-3. But actually, when we go forward, things are going to look very different. I want my libero to push up alongside the deep line playmaker. And then the inverted wing back will also push up a little bit. The inverted full back will come across to form a back two. We've then got three players in front, sort of supplying the players going forward. And so actually when the Mazala moves forward and the box to box midfielder moves forward, we're actually going to look a lot more like this when we try to attack and score goals. That means we've got plenty of players trying to score, plenty of players trying to support, and if we 
get caught on the counter-attack, well, we might be a little bit stuffed then. And so when I put players into their positions, this is how the team is hopefully going to be shaping up this season based on how I perceive the players right now. I've also sorted our subs to be in position order as well for the backup. So goalkeeper first, then right back, right centre-back, left centre-back, so on and so forth. So we do have 22 players who I trust this upcoming season. However, there are some weak areas, notably right back. Dennis Appiah is very good at what he does. Is an inverted wing back by design so that's perfect for us it's just his backup is absolutely atrocious uh, he's got some potential but only league der potential ability um and a league leader right now in the i think not even division below us i think two divisions below us so really if we have to play this guy we are panicking. We've also only got one good left back as well in Leo. Uh, he's actually more of a centre back, but is playing that inverted full back role to sort of come across to be a centre back. And again, our backup in that position is not particularly good. I don't really want to have to use Mahmood at all. He's only good enough to play in the league below us. I will also sort the numbers out as well. There's no way I'm having number seven play at centre back. That does leave us with three players left over. Two of them are out on loan currently. Uh, Louis is he's okay. Nothing too special to be fair. But Jan is really good. He would be our very best right back. So I'm frustrated that he's out on loan with no option to recall him either this season. That leaves us with Ayman Aki. I've not given him position. That leaves us with Ayman Aki, who I've not given a position to just yet. He has the highest potentiality of any young player at the club apparently according to the stars right now. Potential league on Uber Eats standard, which is fantastic for us. The issue right now is he's only good enough to play two leagues below us. So we are going to try and get this guy out on loan ASAP. In fact, actually transfer, um, offer via transfer room, loan offer. Someone pay 100% of his wages, please. Make him at least a regular starter, get him gone. Now we do actually have a second team and under 19 team. The issue with the second team is that they're all rubbish. Uh, the best player uh, is this guy and his potentiality is only league duh. So I'll be honest with you, I don't really have any plans for any of these players. If anyone wants to buy them off me, I'll just sell them, I think. The under 19s is a little bit different. However, they are all 16 years old. Uh, they've got loads of potential and potentially five-star potential with this right back here, which will be very handy for us. But of course, there's not really much we can do about them right now. They've got to develop for two, three seasons first. So we'll keep tabs on these players, but I don't think we'll do much with them at the moment. The staff situation at the club is that there's actually quite a lot of positions open in the team. The scouting department, in the coaching department. Uh, the second team is actually pretty full with staff members. And then the under nine scenes is also pretty empty as well. So I have already gone and tried to hire a bunch of people. As you can see, uh, offered out loads of contracts to coaches and scouts and physios and whatnot, including Dennis Burke. Camp. Hopefully Dennis Bergkamp will be signing for us as a coach for the first team. And I do like the idea of, of Dennis Bergkamp, Ajax, Inter, Arsenal legend, and then he comes here to be a coach. Our scouts are all fairly okay. There's no one who's like absolutely incredible. Uh, we've got a guy here with 17 judging player potential, which is quite handy to have. But the others are sort of in the mid-teens. We could do better with these guys. And we are bringing in some better scouts as well. I have already set up their recruitment focuses. We've got one guy doing all of France. We've got one guy doing Spain and Portugal. One guy doing Belgium and the Netherlands. And one guy doing West Africa. Although it only turns out if we go to edit this look for the areas here. We can only do the Ivory Coast and Senegal for some reason. We can't do any other places in Africa. Our chief scout is also looking at the next opposition as well. Uh, it's this guy who seems to be an expert in the Ivory Coast and Senegal. So maybe because he's got good knowledge there, he can go. I, I don't really know how it works. We are currently scouting the world. So I am surprised that we are limited to just two countries outside of Europe. One of the scouts coming in is an expert in Germany, Switzerland, Austria and England. So we'll probably get him doing Central Europe. And then the other scout is an expert literally everywhere. I mean, this guy just knows his football apparently. So we might end up sending him to sort of the Eastern Europeans of, of Croatia, Romania, Serbia, looking for quality players there. Now, in terms of squad registration rules, we can only have two players from outside the EU. However, the term EU is uh, a little bit loose in France. Nations treated as EU are obviously all the countries that make up the European Union, but also all African, Caribbean and Pacific group states. And then a bunch of other European states that aren't in the EU, including Albania and Bosnia and Montenegro and Serbia. 
also all <laughs> nations in Oceania apart from New Zealand. I don't know what New Zealand did wrong. And then basically just a whole bunch of other countries that once belonged to France. So basically none of you players are South American, North American and uh, English. So although it looks like there's quite a few restrictions, it's not actually that bad. Financially, things actually look really good for us. We've got 14 million pounds in the bank and 3 million to spend. We are right at the limits of the wage budget, but you know what? we could probably get rid of some players and sort that out. The club currently does have 24 and a half million pounds of a miscellaneous debt to repay. Uh, that's gonna take another 12 years apparently. I'm sure the board can pull some strings and get it sorted at some point. But that brings us nicely to our aims and objectives for this upcoming season. There are three promotion spots in this division and the pre-season preview has us coming in second place by the end of the season. So we are looking to get promoted this first season, which is the view reflected by the board, but also the fans. They are requiring us to get automatic promotion from the division. Interestingly, actually, the board only have it as desired. So if we don't manage to do it, uh, we might not get sacked. Probably won't get sacked if we don't do it this season. Uh, the fans will hate me, but I think the board will keep me around. Interestingly, they are much more concerned about the finances of the club, which kind of makes sense, keep the club going. Uh, it's required that we work within the wage budget this season. So really, it wouldn't be the end of the world if we didn't get promoted in this first season. And if anything, it could be advantageous to us. It gives us another season to develop a team ready for the top division. It gives us time to actually replace some of the older players in Deadwood with hopefully some players that are better. I mean, I am trying to get my excuses in very early in case this all goes wrong in the first season, but I, I don't think it's terrible if we don't get promoted. So actually, the objectives this season are pretty simple. We are going to try and get promoted, obviously, and we're also going to try and sign young players with high potential. And then, of course, loan them out like Eamon Aki, so hopefully he gets gone pretty soon. We've got a few friendlies lined up in pre-season to get the team ready. We start off nice and easy with a team that are so far down the divisions they only have minus one social media followers so I mean if we don't win this one like five six seven nil I'll be concerned then we play a team that I think played two well, one division below us right now in the French national so again that should be a win for us we then play one of our affiliate clubs one of our many affiliate clubs uh, Le Poy there two divisions below us so again should be a nice win then we play a team in the second Spanish division Segunda division they might be a little bit tricky that'd be an interesting game El Dense then we have Lorient. Proposal right now, I just tried to organise it before I started recording. Hopefully they accept that and that'll be a tough challenge. And then we round things off with Malaga, uh, who used to be good and are now in the third division of Spain. Then we get things underway against Grenoble at home. And uh, now you may realise that I'm not French. I promise I'll try my best with all these team pronunciations, but I won't get them all completely right, obviously. I mean, the team right at the top, I have no idea how I say it. To the point where I just won't play these guys on camera, I don't think, because I'll just say it wrong. I can say things like Auxerre, Amiens, Anger, um, Dunkirk, Guincamp. Annecy, I've been there, it's beautiful. Go to Annecy. Grenoble, Laval, Paris, Pau, QRM, Rodez, Bastia, KN, Troyes, VAFC, Easy Border. Okay, maybe I'm okay with this um, until someone French is watching and they just tell me them all wrong. Ah, now we've got the important meeting. I've got to introduce myself to the team. Wow. I mean, I'm coming here not speaking a word of French. I've probably got an interpreter next to me. But I just want to introduce myself as the new manager, and everyone seems pretty happy with that. I'll talk about the upcoming league games this season, and I think we should try and get ourselves automatic promotion. Let's not put pressure on champions, let's say automatic promotion, and wow. Okay. A mix. A lot of players are pretty pleased with that. A lot of them are hurt and offended which seems like quite a dramatic way to put it. Sissoko says, come off it, we're not good enough to be getting promoted. Well, you know what? Maybe you're not good enough to get promoted. I'm actually going to write these players down um, so I can remember who they are and then sell them. I will conveniently leave uh, A-Man off the list because I, I, he's got potential and I like him. Normally I'd back down at this point, but I'm going to have a spine about me and uh, I'm going to say I don't think I'm being unrealistic at all. And... Uh, well, that's, it's not gone quite as, I thought these players might back me up and now they don't seem particularly happy. Other players seem insulted and offended. Still doesn't seem fair on us. Let me just accept it basically. Uh, I'll tell you what, I wasn't expecting this sort of overall reaction, but I respect those of you who don't agree with me. 
and it's not gone. I'm just going to stop talking now, I think, and just get out of this meeting. Morel has improved, though, for the most part, which is a good thing. Probably could have gone better, that. I am going to try out some different skins as we play through the first season or so of this uh, Let's Play. Currently using TCS. I think it's the only one that's out. If you like it, I'll put a link down in the description to it. Lone bids coming in for A-Man. You love to see it. Uh, he's good enough to play in the National 2. Leading player for them. That's the fourth division. But we are getting bids from teams in the third division. That might be better, to be fair. He's right on the cusp of being a third division player, so why not put him there? I've gone through all the offers, rejected all of them apart from this team. Nior, I think is maybe how you pronounce it. Um, they seem to have, well, I can show you basically. They are predicted to come fifth this season and have very good training facilities. So that's quite a nice balance of things there. Playing in a decent team uh, with decent facilities, he should improve. Oh, look at this. Dennis Bergkamp has agreed to join the club as a coach. Wow. Who'd have thought it? Tom and Dennis Bergkamp working together. So let's play this first friendly against the team that are so low down, they've got minus one followers in social media. Uh, this should be a big win for us. Now, Gaitan is uh, currently got a small knock, so we will take him off and bring Sissoko on to start this game, but we'll rotate everyone around at some point anyway. Right, first highlight of a brand new... Si it's only a friendly, right? It's only a friendly, so we can't get too excited. And they are a rubbish team, and we have won a penalty literally inside of two minutes, which is... A great start for us. I've not actually looked at the takers. Uh, who is taking this one? It's our number nine in pre-season, Sissoko. Now, he was very cross with me, and he has scored a goal. It's a shame that I'm going to have to sell him for being cross with me. When the players learn that this is a dictatorship and not a democracy, they will like me more and understand that what I do is right for them. Highlight straight from the restart, though, and we've won the ball very quickly. Right. This is kind of what I mean, right? We've got the two defenders there, the centre-back and the left-back's cutting in. Suddenly, the libera gets forward. Tadeo is kind of just covering the side a little bit, and we've also got Appiah closing in from the right wing. Sissoko should be leading the charge. He is. We've got Diara on this near side wing. We've got uh, the other guy on the far side wing, and then our two centre-mids are pushing forward. So essentially, that is kind of happening, the two, three, five. And it's also been a good ball into Sissoko, who, who scores another one. Going to be even more annoying when I have to sell him, because uh, if he scores goals like that every single game, it will make keeping him quite difficult. Cafro with a free kick. He's our right winger this season, uh, and is meant to be pretty decent. That free kick wasn't anything to really write home about, to be honest with you. But he uh, gets the ball back, gets down to the byline, cuts it back across, ball cut out, but our centre mid, our Mazala there, gets the challenge in, gives the ball to Diara, our right winger, who scores. 3-0 inside of 10 minutes. It's always a little bit awkward when you are starting at a new team and you don't know any of the players, and especially when you're playing in France and they all have French surnames, as Tardeo just scores a nice header there, to be fair. It's now 4-0 in 12 minutes. But I'm learning these players just like you are, and it's, it's going to be difficult for the first few games to actually remember who's who, where they play, and how to say their names. That's going to be my biggest challenge, I think. Not winning the Ligue 1 or the Champions League, right? My biggest challenge is, is pronouncing players' names correctly. And I think I might just get it in the bin immediately. Uh, another goal, by the way. 16 minutes played. I mean, why are we even playing this sort of friendly? I mean, it's clearly not a challenge for us at all in the slightest. This team are going to get battered and have their morale ruined. I suppose the only positive of this is that we're going to get some fitness into our players. But we could do that by playing a better team. Oh, there's literally another highlight straight. I feel bad for these guys. I mean, we're not learning really anything about how good our team is. Yes, we can beat a team from at least three divisions below us quite comfortably. We're not learning, like, is this formation actually viable? Will this formation work well against teams of our level? We're just learning that we can, we can just batter some poor village team. Lobry, he's our box-to-box -box midfielder, I think. Gives the ball to Cafro. <laughs> Sissoko can uh, make it six. And now cafro has got a free kick, edge of the area. It's going in, isn't it? It's not. Wow. This is why we're now giving free kicks to Lobry instead. And he... Was that a saver off the crossbar? Either way, he delivered a good free kick there. Maybe Lobry's the guy to be taking our free kicks for us. Diara finds our left back who uh, gives the ball away. Right. Maybe we know that our left back isn't very good. Although we did discuss earlier, he is the best left back because he's a centre back with a left foot. And the actual left back is atrocious. So that is an area that we do need to address. In the meantime, Lobry... Uh... <laughs> 
Oh my word. Well, 7 0 at half time is, uh, is pretty good. Dressing room, good first half, lads. Well done. I'm now going to change absolutely everyone. Etienne Green's on a 7.1 rating. I mean, he's had to do nothing. I bet he's done nothing all game. He's just sat down, leaning against the post. But let's just uh, swap them all around anyway, and uh, and we'll be done with it. You know what, as well, at, at this stage, I, I might just go to only commentary and <laughs> just go as fast as I can to get through this game. I'll turn, turn highlights off as well. I don't want to see this. We've just got an eighth goal. I want to get through this game as quickly as possible now. Although as the clock does tick on, it's only 8-0 still. They only scored one goal in this second half, which to me suggests basically our second string team are rubbish. That's got me concerned, actually. If they can't score, they've scored another one there. It's now 9-0. But if they can only score two goals and our first string team scored seven, that's concerning to me. And... We will need to do some recruitment this window. Maybe try and offload some of those backup players and bring in some slightly better alternatives. Or maybe this village team just got really good in the second half. I think they've still got the same players on the pitch because they've all got terrible match ratings. I also have realized uh, we can't really use this skin going forwards because it's got Work the Spaces logo on there. And uh, I, for one, I'm not going to give him free advertising. Anyway, 10-0. 10-0 in the end. We got to double figures right at the end. What an absolutely pointless game. The real test will be Lorient. That's going to be the real test. El Dense as well. Those two games, I think if we win them, we're looking good. But we're going to come back next time for the Grenoble game. We're going to kick the season off in the next episode. Now, I should say episodes aren't going to be daily of this, at least now. Uh, I think we'll do a few seasons to see if you guys are receptive and whatnot. And then if you are... I'll probably get an editor to edit up these videos for me and then they might come a bit more frequently, but my priority is always going to be the main channel. But I think at least three episodes a week of this is reasonable, so uh, look forward to a next one on when I think we do Monday, Wednesday, Friday to start off with. And uh, let me fail that in the first two weeks probably, but that's what we'll do. So if you're looking forward to coming on this journey with me at St Etienne, make sure you subscribe to the channel.